You're watching a recorded session from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas, sponsored by WP Engine. Welcome to Making Search Great, not again but for the first time, giving WordPress powerful search and filtering. Let me introduce our speaker, Scott Kingsley Clark. I am Scott Kingsley Clark, and I'm the lead developer of this project you've been seeing a whole lot of. I am somewhat responsible for most of it, but um, we do have three uh, team members, that's including me, and Jim, you've met. Phil, you haven't met. He couldn't make it today, but he is in Ohio um, working hard on um, Pods 2.7 this week, and we're trying to get it to beta. And actually, I'm going to show you a little bit, a um, little sneak preview into the beta uh, at the end of this, because I'll have a little bit extra time. But um, a little bit about me, since we didn't necessarily go around the room and then introduce Jim and I specifically, but uh, I am a lead developer, or I'm a, a senior web engineer at um, TenUp. It's a, a firm that works with a lot of large clients, and we've got 120 people or so, and um, it's pretty fun. My background with WordPress, I started in 2007, so a lot of you also started in 2007, Carol. Um, and so <laughs> I've done a lot, but um, it was mainly because I was lucky to work around a lot of really um, great people. I think my the key to my success has been mentoring and talking with people who have a lot more knowledge than I do and tapping into them and not being afraid to ask questions. Um, also, not being afraid to ask Google or whatever search engine, um, because that happens every day. And probably Aaron, uh, yeah, that's right. How many times a day do you think you Google? Uh, about six times an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, that it, there's no shame in admitting you don't know everything, because it's impossible to know everything. PHP has thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of functions. It's crazy. And um, same thing with all these different plugins. They are, there's so much out there. So it's really important to um, just to look around and try to dig around. And if you have no idea how the solution should go, talk it out with someone else. Try to explain your issue. That sometimes helps a lot. So going into the actual presentation, we're talking about search. And this is a period of time in my life which was uh, a lot of pain because I was working on a large project and we had to search a lot of content. And WordPress, by default, it only searches post title, the content excerpt. And um, it relies on MySQL, which is the database backend of most WordPress sites. And that could be pretty slow, because if you are working with millions of rows, millions of posts across all sorts of different post types, um, we're talking about a really large um, enterprise level project, you can't just go searching through that database to pull out posts based off of field. That is incredibly um, intensive on the database server, especially when you have 50, 100, maybe 1,000 people on the site at once, all trying to search. And so a couple of the things that it is also not good at is relevancy. Um, relevancy does not really get all that better than when you search for a, a couple of keywords, it pulls up what returned, but it doesn't really sort it um, in any super significant, meaningful way. So you might be searching for um, hats, but really, Santa Hats is on trend this year, and we've had 10 posts about it, but we haven't had any posts uh, about it before that until 2010. And so you search hats, and the 2010 post comes up. That has no relevancy uh, on a number of, for a number of reasons for a client that may want their more recent hats to show up at the top. Also, there's no advanced filtering. Um, obviously, you just type in the search box whatever you can get away with, and that's all you get. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a thing called Elasticsearch. And what this is is a database server that gives uh, WordPress a way and, and other um, projects a way to uh, sort of take away the searching part of it, uh, take that out of the equation, have another service provide that. And this allows us to take advantage of a lot of really useful um, features built by developers for um, highly scalable pr uh, projects. Uh, it gives you the ability to create relevant re results. Um, you can sort them by, um, by date, or you can sort them by uh, a specific configuration, could be a combination of date and, and how many times a keyword appears, and which fields the keyword appears in, um, weighted results. So maybe you want to search hats, but you want um, uh, content to come up that had hats in it um, in a specific custom field give that the most weight, you can do that. It's, it, you can, you've got a lot of complex 
ability to uh, customize this, highly customizable. Uh, you have the ability to do auto suggestions, so you're typing into the search box and it starts pulling up keywords that match the content that is in the um, Elasticsearch. Also fuzzy matching, so say you sh search for hat, it'll also come up with hats. Or say you search for hats, it'll also come up with hat. Um, also, the ability to handle mis, uh, misspellings, all sorts of stuff like that, and uh, geographic searches by location, latitude, longitude, stuff like that. So it's it's a really cool thing. Um, it's recently come into heavy use uh, at Tenup over the past few years, um, and we even built a plugin called Elastic Press. Uh, it's a free plugin available on uh, WordPress.org. You can also go to ElasticPress.io. And uh, it allows you to um, basically take your WordPress site and send it out to an Elasticsearch instance. Um, this isn't something you can just do on WP Engine or, or other um, shared hosts. Elasticsearch is actually a service you have to have. You can't just um, uh, install on the server. It, it, there is a process to do it. There's a process to maintain it. There's a process to keep it updated, all those sorts of things. So there are services available. Um, but with our plugin, it integrates with WordPress and it, it lets you filter by taxonomy terms, uh, post meta values and keys, um, lets you do the fuzzy search on all sorts of fields, um, even the ones not mentioned here. Um, you can search across multiple blogs. So say you have a whole multi-site um, instance with 10 different shops, or actually let me give you a better idea. So you've got news organizations and you are a conglomerate and you have all your sites all together in this one big WordPress instance. And each site has its own site, has its own theme, its own content, its own categories, all that. So in this case, in ElasticPress, you can actually tell your search when you go to the site search, search across all of the sites. So maybe in your search box, you might have an option to say, search across all of our sister sites or whatever you might want to call it. This lets you do that sort of thing um, really very easily. And um, it's, uh, it's extremely performant. Um, I can tell you that for sure after uh, a year working in the thick of it. Um, results returned by relevancy and calculations are really highly customizable. Um, like I was saying, you can do, do so much with the code here uh, through filters, through um, WP query integration. Um, it's, it's highly extensible and performant. Uh, with the WP query integration though, um, we're not just talking about search, like just take the search part out of the, the equation. Now we're talking about admin area. So you go to the admin area that can be completely pulled in from Elasticsearch. Um, any parts of your site that may be slow, uh, maybe you have to do a specific query to say, I want to pull on, the, on my homepage the top 10 results of the most hits that I've had um, on a specific series of days or maybe for specific categories um, and exclude certain posts. You can do all these different things, complicated things, and have it all pull in from Elasticsearch. And this is, it wasn't an easy feat. I was involved when, with a lot of those integrations with WP Query, and it was, a, it was a really cool thing to be able to see it actually all work. Because, um, I mean, like I was saying, dealing with millions of rows, this can, every little second can really make a difference for your client. Um, and also, it has some really cool built-in modules for related posts, sort of like Jetpack has related posts. Um, it pulls the related posts all from the content in your post, and it actually allows you to uh, display the related posts at the bottom of your uh, post, just like, like I said, Jetpack related posts does the same thing, and they have also their own Elasticsearch implementation within Jetpack's usage. They use the REST API and do all these different cool things. But anyways, Elasticsearch isn't really limited to Jetpack and automatic. It's, it can be installed in all sorts of different places, and ElasticPress sort of connects you to those. Uh, there are also other options because it, it may be hard to come across an Elasticsearch um, solution for a client with uh, a very shoestring budget. I'll show you a workaround for that in a minute. But uh, if you want something that's entirely MySQL powered, you could use something like Search WP. It has its own database tables which creates its own index of, of um, optimized queries so that it can query your content and query across all different types of content. The keywords, it indexes your PDFs and documents and media. Um, it's got some really cool stuff. It's not as um, customizable as ElasticPress in the sense that all of the cool things Elasticsearch does for you automatically. It can't do all those things, but it does have a lot of cool things in it. Um, it also provides you some stats too from search stats, but those can be provided as well through Elasticsearch um, solutions. Uh, ElasticPress is two point something. 
Yeah. Two point one point. Pretty sure it's two point one point three. Yeah, that's right. Ten up. Dot com slash. I mean, sorry. Um, uh, GitHub. Dot com slash ten up slash Elastic Press. That's the GitHub version of it, but uh, it's also on WordPress. Dot org if you wanted to install it directly from WordPress. Uh, drawback here is it still uses MySQL. It's going to be um, a big problem for your um, your pipes. Um, it. Also, there's also, though, a, another solution here, um, Facet WP. You may want to have a little keyword box, but really, when you're working with products, let's say um, you want to build an Amazon, you have a search box. Sure, so Search WP can give you that search box, give you some cool stuff, or ElasticPress. But what Facet WP gives you is the ability to do drill down searching. So you might want to search by category and click on through and, and filter on further by price. Uh, maybe I, I really don't trust one manufacturer, so I'll just choose them as the seller. Um, and maybe even I might choose, um, if I'm looking for a computer, I want to find one that may have a better processor. So I'll just say only these ones are higher. And um, you've got a pretty cool faceted solution. So FacetWP makes that pr actually really easily um, possible through the UI. Uh, it's also Ajax based, so when you're doing it, it happens right then and there. Just sort of like Amazon works as well. Uh, it's another important thing here. It's compatible with existing content, uh, your custom fields and your taxonomy, so you don't have to do um, too much to integrate with it. But it does have integrations with WooCommerce, uh, Search WP, which lets you add that keyword field, um, easy digital downloads, WP Mail, PolyLang, all sorts of other plugins. Um, again, the drawback is it's MySQL, um, and it, it still provides uh, a lot of value. However, that the database stuff is still a bottleneck. There are solutions people are building with Elasticsearch and Faceted Search. Um, I've talked with Matt Gibbs, who created Faceted WP, and um, he's looking at a solution there as well for something maybe possibly related. But um, let's move on to the, there's uh, the ability here to do all of this stuff we're talking about with pods. It's limited, but uh, it's all inside here, and you can filter any pod. Um, and you can use it as a short code, and it works with pagination. It has a search box, it has relationship drop downs. It's limited in that you can't actually have um, certain fields show up as their own filter, but uh, it's all going to be expanded soon in the near future. Um, it's not as flexible or extendable. Um, there's no relevancy sorting again, but uh, it also still uses MySQL. And um, another cool thing about what I'm doing with ElasticPress is I'm working on a new prototype which uses ElasticPress, Elasticsearch to index all of your advanced content types as well. So it can let you create some really cool stuff there. Um, it's, it's complicated because advanced content types can be anything. Uh, Nick might create um, uh, 96 different advanced content types and, that I've never even created myself. So um, it's important on that side to make it very dynamic and available. Um, but that plugin is, uh, is in the works right now, and I'm excited about it. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you a little demo of it, uh, of not this, the plugin I was talking about, but the uh, ElasticPress itself. So I've got a WordPress site here. Uh, I've got the ability to create my content. So let's go ahead and create one called Review. Reviews. I'm going to do my best to. Uh, not show you any errors on the screen. All right, so I've got my reviews here, basic couple of fields here. Let's go ahead and go back there and add a custom field as well. And let's call this one topic. And um, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to make this a regular text field, but we do have quite a lot of options here. Dave? All right, so there is my content type. Now, when I want to uh, index all my content, and we're going to use this content type later on, um, I would want to search through the site. And let's try that real quick. So let's say I'm going to type in sticky. So I've got a, only one post that has sticky on there. Um, let's say it, let's try a different one. Hello. Couple. All right, so there's a few there. Actually, a ginormous amount. Um, so here I'm just searching for ear, but really I've pulled up earum, and this may not even be what I want to be shown. Um, it only searched the title and the content, 
So it didn't. If, if I had a, a category, it wouldn't have searched the category name and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of limited. But if I go and install a plugin called ElasticPress, that's cool. That's a cool plugin. Uh, it is 3.1.1, by the way, Cassandra. Um, so I go to this ElasticPress area, and uh, I don't have an Elasticsearch set up yet. I need to set up my host. And um, what you can do is use uh, Elasticsearch service. Uh, there's a lot of them, actually. Uh, the one I use for my sites is called Searchly. There are enterprise-level things available. Um, ElasticPress team at uh, TenUp also provides a hosted service as well. Um, and uh, Elastic, uh, Elasticsearch through Searchly is actually pretty cheap con considering what it provides, but uh, they do have a free starter plan down here. Um, lets you create two different indexes as two different sites with uh, up to five megabytes of storage of, of content. So in this case, this simple site can cover that no problem. So I go into my account. I'm going to go and create a site, and it's really easy, so I'm just going to say PodsCamp demo. Create it, and here's my new panel for the search, elastic search. Um, it might be a little confusing, but you don't have to care at all about this. Just pull this URL and go back into your elastic press. Um, when you first install it, it'll walk you through it a lot better. I've already had it installed before, and I'm going to put my elastic search host in there. Now it's all set. So I'm back at my area here. I can activate all these cool things. Like I can activate the search overriding so it can handle all the searches. Related posts is pretty cool too. Hey, how about let's do admin? I don't have WooCommerce installed, so it won't show up at all. But um, I'm going to go ahead and sync all my content out. So now what it's doing is sending out 566 posts of all sorts of po post types. And it's going to go send it out to my Elasticsearch. And over here, I can see uh, as it starts to index, I've got um, one and a half megabytes of content already, and it'll chug around, chug along for a second, and uh, we can move on to the next page. But basically, um, it's pretty easy to use, pretty easy to set up. It may take a little bit for it to first index everything, but as you add new posts, it's going to index that in the background. If you edit a post, you edit the content. It's also going to index it and update that index as well. Probably, it's actually probably synced. It's just taking a minute. If I go, yep. Did you see anything about Swift type? Swift type, that's, um, it's sort of like Elasticsearch uh, solution, except they provide their own search appliance. So it provides the ability to override WordPress entirely, but um, it is their search. So every time it loads up the search box, it has its own code, its own style and stuff. Um, it is similar, however, it's not as customizable. So um, something like Swift type, let me pull it up for other people who may not be familiar with it. Yeah. Um, we run, uh, we run, we ran this on the pod site for a little bit. Um, I was trying out all these different solutions because our search was horribly slow for a while, and so I tried this out, and I just found that it just wasn't really providing me with what I wanted um, in terms of customization, being able to filter by different um, taxonomies, and honestly, it was you had to build, you had to use their code to build it. Whereas when you're using ElasticPress, you're just using WP Query. Um, have you ever used WP Query before? No. Well, um, it's a common used um, piece of code, which a lot of themers were very familiar with, and you can take an existing loop on your site, which may be customized, and convert it to ElasticPress, or in, in by, by default, that search component we enabled a minute ago from ElasticPress, that'll take you over your regular search. So you don't have to change anything we other than... Service search service yes. Providing the right. But it's, um, it's quite quite a lot less, it's quite cheaper. Um, let me see here, how much was this one again? Oh, there it is. Yeah, that, it's a lot cheaper than that. Um, yeah, so as you saw, <laughs> Searchly was um, just you know less than 100 bucks for at least their top three plans. And, 
That's that's crazy. Um, that's another reason why we moved on to something else. Um, but this provides everything that it would. It's a it's a service. It's not just the um, the search ability. It's a service. So it allows you to do all these different searching things. Whereas Elasticpress separates that service from the the search indexing. So Elasticsearch sits in the back, and Elasticpress sits in the front and provides all the stuff that Swift Type provides all together. And your plugin is Elasticpress. Elastic Press, right? Yeah. Well, it's not my plugin, right. but <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, yeah, that's uh, it's a good good example of a uh, solution that's related. Um, let's see how it went with the demo. All right, finished the syncing, and let's go ahead and search on the site again. Let's search by ear. So again, we came up with some stuff, but as you noticed, we have content that was slightly different. Um, for a number of reasons, this one had ear maybe appear more often in the further further down in the content. Um, it may have had the, the ear in some sort of category name or the author name. It does search a bunch of these different things um, just right out of the box. So it's a uh, it's a pretty easy setup. If you can get over the hump of creating your account at Searchly, getting the URL from your account, plugging it into ElasticPress. It's kind of a couple of clicks, really. Um, easy setup. You saw me. I just set it up in, I don't know, what was it, 10, 5, 10 minutes? But I was talking through it. So um, it's easy setup, and it's, it's, it works with WPCLI as well. So let's say, I, let's talk about that million row project. Going back to that one, we have millions of rows. We have, let's say, um, 20 different fields across those different content types. We're looking at a huge database table for the post table just alone that stores all the content for WordPress. So we're looking at maybe let's say 8 million rows of posts across all these different content types and let's say for 10 different fields across those, let's say every piece of content has 10 fields, uh, that is 80 million rows inside of your post meta table. And that's not optimized, it's just a key which is the name of the field and the value. And I want to go and do some joins. I want to go do find some information across all these different posts. And when it happens on my SQL side, it takes quite a long time. And, it, and if you have 10 users doing that for all unique searches, you are going to have a really large bottleneck. Um, you can solve this by scaling up all of your servers and your database server split it up into its own database server and do all these different things, have a big master slave total uh, database setup and you can sort of alleviate some of those issues but you don't want to go through all that trouble if you have a simple solution right there and it's already working and it's working nicely and it's easy to use and it's um, it provides more functionality than WordPress itself so elastic press is really um, it's changed my life when working with WordPress but uh, it changed my clients life as well because at 10 up we were working with this client and their sites were loading within 15 to 20 seconds each load, and um, and that was just to, just to load up the initial results. And when someone did a search, it took maybe 20, 25 seconds. Um, and they sort of hid this underneath a few other things, but when it came down to our ElasticPress integration, um, we cut that by, like we're now a quarter of that, so like five to 10 seconds for the initial load, depending on what they're doing. Um, and when we use caching, uh, that improves it even more. So what I did was I took another step. So not just the search information is cached, I'm also caching what I'm displaying, what I'm pulling out of the database. So for each row uh, that I am using to index inside of ElasticPress, I've actually, I don't have a corresponding set of meta inside of the post meta table. The meta table only stores one value which has all of the data that I need that can be edited um, through a, a more customized application. Um, but it provides me the ability to not have 8 million rows in that post meta still. I mean, in the, um, uh, it won't have 80 million rows, it'll have 8 million instead. So I cut that by 10, um, 100%, um, and, or without, what is it? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's a really, really useful solution. Um, and when you think about those other types of situations you can get into with a client that has a growing needs, um, ElasticPress can really grow with that. Um, 
and it's still growing. With Elastic Press, we have this exact client. They had 20 filters um, on their site, and we needed to filter by taxonomies, by meta values, by all these sorts of different things. We needed to customize the sort by date values, by numbers. Um, all these things are stored as just text inside the post meta table, so that would uh, each thing you want to do, if I want to sort by date, that's more weight on that time to load all those MySQL results. So um, Elastic Press really makes that a whole lot easier by leveraging Elasticsearch. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's important to um, optimize your site for your clients because they don't know any better. They just want you to build their site. Um, and when you tell them, well, WordPress can't do this um, well, then they're going to say, well, WordPress must suck. I need to move over to something else. Um, so it's important to know those solutions are out there, available, and um, are cheaper for their <laughs> budget. Um, that's, that's definitely a good point right there. Also, another point there is what if that client says, I want to search by an uh, old address I used to have. Um, you're searching in that text box. It's searching maybe names, some very basic meta information, but it may not have access to those address, the address information from the meta fields, um, may not have access to certain things that you may want to search by. So those, the ability to search by an extended amount of information um, optimized in a way that is quick. That's no brainer for me. I install Elastic Press on every big site I use. So um, Elasticsearch isn't the end all um, solution, um, especially at lower levels. Um, Basset WP is used with larger sites as well. It just depends on how you sort of hide some of the MySQL uh, bottlenecks. Basset WP is, is also, you have to pay for it annually. Um, it's probably just a little bit cheaper than um, Searchly Elasticsearch um, plans, but it's, uh, it does provide you with the ability to do stuff like this. So let's say I have a, um, I'm trying to buy a car. I know I want to buy a car for sure. Um, let's go ahead and say I want to find a BMW that matches my needs. Let's see here. Um, you know, I want real, real wheel drive, and let's say I want it to be uh, can't pay that much, no way. Let's try something my budget. So BMW 2 Series, there you go. And um, of course, this is a custom list, but um, what you have the ability to do with Facet WP is you can create uh, a sidebar widget which has all your facets. You can customize what kind of facet it is. It could be a drop down, could be a checkbox list like you see here, it could be a range value, like in this case of the prices, and um, it could also be a number of other different. Um, input types they allow. And you can also customize by sorting. So you can say, I want the best value, but also the best miles per gallon. So there's some cool stuff you can do. This is all out of the box. With Elasticsearch? Uh, you can, but you'd probably be building it yourself. Yeah, but because you can pull that. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd do this in an hour, probably. Because I can use WV Query, I can use leverage all these different things that are inside of Elastic Press to just, I just type a little bit and it's done. But uh, the only problem is doing the interface, doing all that stuff. That takes a little bit longer to make it really nice. But so fast that the providing it, it will be right. Accomplished. Yep, that's right. And uh, it is. It doesn't require you to have a special server. This one's on um, a small shared hosting plan, uh, relatively easily. And um, also, there's the search that I talked about, um, which gives you a lot of power as well. Um, just without having to deal with Elasticsearch and deal with um, a lot of data, this is still a really great fit. And then there's something I hadn't mentioned also, it's called relevancy. And uh, they have a free version, they have a premium version as well. Um, a lot of people do use this. Uh, I can't be a testimonial for it, however I did use it uh, a couple times and it just didn't fit what I needed to do um, in a performant way for the amount of data I was working with. Um, and you can see here it has a, quite a few features. Um, and it's uh, it's not a bad solution. It's a great solution if you if you're just trying to figure out what you want. It may actually fit your needs entirely. Um, it doesn't do the faceted search kind of stuff, um, that kind of interface. But faceted WP is, I think, the uh, the current recommendation for people who who do that with WordPress. Yeah, that's what this was doing right here. It's all AJAX, and it just it just happened right then and there. Um, you didn't do a page load, it just changed it automatically right there. Um, I've even heard of people having multiple facets um, on the same page, so they maybe have a facet section group right here, and then one below it to do other filtering on different pieces of the content. 
it actually can even work with um, WordPress out of the out of the gate. You don't have to do any custom templating to support it. But this right here is showing um, that you can sort of customize your output and display uh, as easy as just putting a short code into a page and having your um, your fastest in a widget or whatever. And this is fully fully customizable. You can have it um, up top. You can have it on the right, depending on your theme, of course. Um, and then in terms of the the theme is a constraint in terms of the, where you want your widgets and your facets, but there is a facet um, a short code you can put at the top of your post, which would display at the top instead. Uh, well, this is that also is another theme restriction, but uh, this one is pretty responsive, I would say. Right, it, it adds the ability. Um, Auto suggest is is in the current feature of Elastic Cert, Elasticpress itself. It's a feature of Elasticsearch, so you have the ability to build that. We're actually working on multiple new modules that allow you to do those sorts of things, but. Um, yeah, just imagine you go to search. It's sort of like Swift type. Swift type lets you just type in your search, and it starts to fill auto fill with some different options. Sort of like Google. You go to Google. Yeah, but that's the, the ability is there in the code, and um, I can make use of it right now if I wanted to. Okay. That's right. So you just call the um, Elasticsearch query and get back what you want and return it. Anywhere you wish to have a WP query, um, and for um, Nick, you use WP query at all much? Oh yeah. Yeah. How, how often would you say you use it in a, a non-advanced uh, content type site? Oh. All the time. So you, you, any any query he would write to list a post, to list a team list, um, he can turn those into saying, why don't you talk to Elasticsearch or Elasticpress for this? It's just a under, EP underscore integrate. It's just a flag you add as an argument, and it happens. Um, and there's also uh, uh, I I wrote I mean to pull that further back, I wrote a, a script that will cache all of the Elasticpress queries so it never hits Elasticsearch for anything it's ever hit. Um, and that's called, go to my Chrome. Cache WP query. This works with um, Elasticpress or just a regular uh, WP query, and this lets you further optimize your stuff so you avoid extra database requests. Um, and it's um, like I said, it's, it's fully integrated with Elasticpress so that you can cache everything and uh, cache it pretty nicely. And this caches to the object cache. Um, however, if uh, you are using pods, and I have a couple minutes here, I can show you. Um, a cool plugin that we also built to further customize um, your site for it to load faster. So there's a plugin called Pods Alternative Cache. And you've seen it a couple of times tonight when people are in the plugins area. This further optimizes your site because you can um, you can have a host like WP Engine, which is great. Lots of hosts support object caching. Lots of hosts don't support tons of object caching. So let's say that million post site, if I tried to do that on a shared host, um, every time I would cache a set of queries, I'd run out of cache because it would just get so big. So what happens when you do that? You basically lose all the rest of your object cache that was in there. So I say here, um, it's sort of like a um, spaghetti maker. So you put a bunch of spaghetti stuff in there, you squeeze it out, it comes out on the other side. But it has to come out on the other side, otherwise there's no room for it. So that's what the object cache does. So even if you expire some of your cache things for, say, like, you're building something you want to only cache for a day. Um, if you have a ton of stuff that roll into that cache before the day's up, that cache may not, may not even last the whole day. Uh, and that happens quite a lot often with um, some larger sites. And I was on WP Engine hosting. I was trying to figure this out. And I figured out that they had a limit on their object caching to a specific um, megabyte limit or something like that. It was maybe 200, 300 megabytes or whatever it was at the time. And that was a problem because I had uh, maybe a gigabyte of, of built-out object caching data I wanted to store from time to time. And a problem that it compounds further is all of the pods configuration is cached. And, but it's, it, it's, you don't really notice it because you're loading around, the, the, you're going through the site and you're adding a content type here, adding a custom field here, but it's building all this in a, a cached object. So it doesn't have to go to the code database and say, what was this again? It knows it. Um, so when you throw in a gigabyte of object caching, that goes away. So every page load, you have no object caching. It's, it's always loading everything fresh because it always keeps throwing everything out. So alternative cache gives you that ability to 
um, have an alternative cache for pods itself to utilize for its stuff so it never gets obliterated by a gigantic, ginormous object caching site. Um, and one of those benefits, again, of this plugin is it integrates with pods alternative cache so you can cache all of your extra queries through that as well. So there's some cool things you can do there. Uh, any other questions about, uh, I can talk about caching too, but uh, any questions about searching, filtering, optimizing uh, your experience for complicated or simple sites? <laughs> uh, I believe SearchWP does that. Uh, I think they have that ability to wait a specific post so it always appears for certain keywords. Um, Elasticsearch has the ability to wait things too, but... Um, search to give you an interface to go in and start... I can show that to you right now. I don't believe it does, but that's just because I haven't ever had to do um, <laughs> that before. So you got your content. Let's say, uh, let's go to detail here. Yeah, you don't really have, you can just see the in information here, all the real raw data that we store for Elastic Press. So that would be something you could add though. Um, it could be on top of Elastic Press. It didn't have to necessarily use um, the Elasticsearch side, but right, there's no interface. Yeah, but it, that's a cool idea. I definitely think that would be a, a not super common, but a, a pretty common need for cases where things are very important to a client and e they won't product. budge. Yeah, yeah, like they're pushing a new product for Christmas, and this needs to always show up at the top. It's featured. That's a thing. You can actually do feature sticky kind of stuff like that with Elasticsearch. So you don't have to necessarily target it for a specific keyword, but any time that thing comes up inside of the search, it can, it can always be on top. So that's that's an option right there. That's a, that, yeah, it's a little trickier because um, when you're dealing with going through the query multiple times, you're not you may not be able to take it into account that the one you want to appear may match, but it's not on that page. So that can be problematic. Uh, also, another problem could be that um, if you build a solution around that, what if you go to page two, is that product gonna still appear at the top? There's things like that you kind of have to think about. Um, so in, in a way that you can handle that with Elastic Press is to sort. So you can sort by specific taxonomy and say, this one's featured for um, this season. And so you say featured, and that term has the feature term, yes, or whatever it might be. And in your sorting for WP Query, uh, you can filter the default search sort for WordPress. Um, you can sort it by uh, featured taxonomy, whatever. There's a little information about it on the um, on the ElasticPress site and how it, you would actually query that. But you can do multiple sorting. So you would search by whatever, and then you would sort by your taxonomy for the featured, then relevancy, so that always your products will appear on top that you want featured. So that, that, that's a good solution right there for ElasticPress. Yeah, you could. Um, it, it would be obviously more complex, but um, you can do that sort of thing with um, the order by as well. It, and when you do a save on a post and you want to make it featured or something, you can store a custom meta value or a taxonomy term in the background that they don't see, and then that can be curated and added to the order by. But this order by, as you see here, you can um, just type in title, order by title, and then space, and then some specific meta value, or maybe it's a taxonomy. Um, I don't have I don't have an example here of that, but that's possible as well. I think we're um, we're done for mine. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll t go ahead and take a break. So let all of this information coalesce somehow. Thank you for watching this recording from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas. As always, you can get help with pods on our website at httppods.io slash forums. You can also get help on our Slack chat at pods.io slash chat. We're inside the hashtag support channel Monday through Friday, Mondays and Fridays all day, and Tuesday through Thursday, the first hour of each day. You can also get help on our wordpress.org support forum at wordpress.org slash support slash plugin slash pods.